hello everyone welcome back to my channel comfort and joy with lady curry in today's video we are cooking so come on and cook with me so you see me here starting out with my macaroni um what i am doing i already have my noodles boiled i'm going to add evaporated milk a full can and i'm going to add a full can of cream of mushroom soup to my um, pre-boiled noodles and I'm going to go ahead and get them both in there and I'm going to stir and mix and incorporate both of those items really well into my noodles. Here's a peek of my candied yams and it's bubbling away in all of its yummy goodness. The gravy that I made for my yams are orange juice, a stick of butter, a half a cup of white sugar, a cup of brown sugar, cinnamon and nutmeg. And I let it just melt down and then I dumped my um, roasted yams into the sauce and I'm just letting it bubble away and soak up all that yummy goodness. So now I am pouring my evaporated milk into my noodle mixture and I'm going to go ahead and incorporate that as well. Okay now I'm about to add one egg to my noodle mixture and what I normally do and this is a rule of mine for baking and cook cooking I always crack my egg into a container here I'm using one of the cans the soup cans to just control if I get a shell inside there I'm not ruining my whole batch of uh, noodle mixture I can control it and fish out a piece of shell if need be so that is a rule that I, I live by doing my baking and my cooking when dealing with cracking raw eggs so yes I incorporated my egg you can use one or two I normally use one it's sufficient for me and now you see me dumping in some water and yes that was a small bottle of spring water that I dumped into my macaroni and cheese mixture so now i'm going ahead and shaking in about um a tablespoon of lowry's seasoning salt i'm going to go ahead and shake that in and i'm going to mix that in as well then i have pure sea salt and i did a couple of shakes i'm a cook i guess so i don't measure as much anymore so i normally do by eye so about a teaspoon of each, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of each. Um, for those who are beginning to cook, do half a teaspoon and you can always add later. Then I also went ahead and added a few shakes of paprika. And I'm mixing that all through so it can get dispersed and incorporated into my mixture. Okay, so next the part comes where I'm adding my cheese. I'm using mozzarella, I'm using sharp cheddar cheese, and I'm also using the um, Kobe Jack Creamy Melt. Normally I would use like up to five to seven cheeses, but this was a day where I wasn't doing like a Thanksgiving or Christmas uh, macaroni and cheese, so I kind of chilled on the amount of cheeses that I was using. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to dump about three quarters of the bag into my mixture. I like my uh, macaroni and cheese cheesy. If you don't, if you skimp on a cheese, it's no point in making it, in my opinion. <laughs> so you gotta have macaroni and cheese. It's part of the name. <laughs> So yes, I'm dumping like three quarters of the bag and I'm going ahead and I'm stirring that and getting that all mixed in there. So every bite you get some creamy, yummy, cheesy goodness. Now I'm going in and I'm doing half and half. And um, eventually I, I think I used about a cup of half and half. 
it really does absorb the mixture really becomes like voluminous and a note also I don't boil my noodles until they're super soft I just parboil them because they're going to bake more in the oven and you want a nice bite to your macaroni and cheese you don't want it mushy so I've never boiled my noodles until they were super soft so now I'm going ahead and pouring my completed mixture into a uh, Pyrex dish that I sprayed with a little bit of Pam cooking spray so um, I wouldn't get any stickiness but because there's butter in the noodles they normally don't stick anyway and I'm spreading it out just providing an even flat surface so I can go ahead and sprinkle on the remainder of my three bags of cheese so here you see me mixing all three of the cheeses i'm going to you know mix it up with my hands and then i'm going to topple them now you guys can use your own creativity use whatever cheese you want use whatever seasonings you like some people even use garlic in their macaroni and cheese i don't but some people do doing the Thanksgiving holiday, I do use like a savory herb mixture as well, and it just really gives it that, ah, this is Thanksgiving type of taste to it. But here, this was a meal that I prepared for um, Father's Day, actually. It was a couple of uh, dishes that my husband really, really enjoys. So I went ahead and made this, and I thought I would record it and share with you guys in a cook with me. So there you see me just spreading the cheese mixture all over, and you can pat the top with butter if you want, but because I have a full stick of butter already in there, I was gonna kinda chill on the amount of butter, trying to, you know, pull back and be as healthy as I possibly can um, be for me and my family. So I'm sprinkling salt, pepper, a little bit of Lowry's, no, no, a little bit of paprika on top, salt, pepper, and paprika. And then because of trial and error, I have been for years now uh, lining a cookie sheet with aluminum foil and then I'm sitting my pan on there because what happens is all that yummy bubbly, bubbly goodness will sometimes bubble up and over out of your pan, especially a shallow dish like this Pyrex dish that I'm using. So now I am moving on to the yams. Now I did not um, film the beginning of it, but I, I roasted about four large yams in the oven, 350 for about an hour or up to an hour when they were super tender, which was not really my um, goal, but they got a little tender, too tender for my taste. I pulled them out, let them cool, cool down so they can kind of firm up. And then I um, peeled them off, cut them up. And I, meanwhile, I made my mixture of a stick of butter, orange juice, about a cup of orange juice, a little squeeze of lemon, vanilla extract, cinnamon, nutmeg, um, brown sugar, I don't know if I said brown sugar, white sugar. And I think that was it, and I let it all come to a boil. Normally I would let it get really, really thick. Um, it was somewhat thick, but um, it was still a little runny, but they soaked the juice up beautifully. And they had time to like just marry all the flavors. And then you see me adding them to another Pyrex dish and I'm gonna put them in a 350 oven and just let them hang out. So now here are my glazed apples. So my husband adores these apples. They're similar to the yams. And because I'm having pork chops, I also wanted to add his apples. He likes eating the apples with the yams and anything really, pork chops, yams, steak, it doesn't matter. But yes, so I pretty much did the same thing except I used apple cider for my mixture now i'm moving on to my new york strip steak and i seared them on a grill pan to get some grill marks this pan right here that i'm using for my grilled pork chop and i marinated both meats with some olive oil garlic salt pepper and some steak seasonings and lowry seasonings so here are the finished items 
my candy yams, my grilled pork chops, my grilled New York strip steak, my um, macaroni and cheese. Here are my finished glazed apples, my cinnamon apples, looking just tender and yummy, and the hubby will love them. I also grilled some asparagus in olive oil, salt, pepper, a couple of squeezes of fresh lemon juice, and um, I believe a lemon pepper seasoning as well. And I just grilled them for a few minutes just until they became um, just tender, but had a nice bite and firmness to them. And they were really, really delicious. So then I also, from the drippings, I couldn't let all that uh, beef drippings nor the pork chop drippings go to waste. So I made a homemade gravy with the beef and the pork chop drippings separately. And I just used that, some seasonings in there, put a little bit of cornstarch and whisked it away. I added some herbs to it, some thyme, and just whisked them and brought them up to a boil until they became thick and set them aside. And um, we had two gravies to drizzle on our meat. The pork mixture, I did add apple juice, apple juice, apple cider to the um, gravy just to um, accompany and complement the seasonings that were already on the pork chops. So now moving on to dessert. He loves my peach cobbler and this is a quick and easy peach cobbler that I got from Paula Dean. It's in one of her cookbooks and if I can find it I'm going to link it down below. So what I did was in the bowl I have a cup of white sugar, a half a cup of brown sugar, some cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, a pinch of salt and you add I think a 28 ounce can of sliced peaches to it. I'm squeezing some fresh lemon juice because lemon juice brings out everything and it just really, really heightens the flavor of it. And I also added orange juice to my peach cobbler as well and some vanilla as well, some pure vanilla extract. And you just mix up your uh, peach mixture. And meanwhile, I have in a pan one stick of butter in the oven um, melting and you get that bubbly hot. And when you finish your peach mixture, you set that aside and you go on to the batter. So the batter here is a cup of self-rising flour. It has to be self-rising. It can't be just regular flour because it won't rise unless you put a rising agent like baking powder and baking soda in it. Some salt, some cinnamon, and some sugar, half a cup to a cup of sugar just to sweeten your bread. And you see me here dumping the batter mixture over the melted butter. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is spoon out my peach mixture over my batter. And what will happen is the batter is going to uh, bake up and over your peaches and create its own crust. So in times like this where you're not um, in a position where you can make crust from scratch, which I have done and I can do, but it was a quick and easy. He loves this dish so much. And I thought, let me treat him to one of his favorite comforting desserts. So you bake that for about an hour. Just keep an eye on it. So here is the finished steak. I put some uh, cherry tomatoes in there, some um, bell peppers, here are my glazed apples, my pork chops, and here we are enjoying our dinner. This was on Father's Day. The little girl, of course, <laughs> she doesn't like half of what I cooked, so she always has rice and some corn or broccoli, but today she just had corn and some um, pork chops. And then there is the hubby's plate. And boy, oh boy, did I tell you we enjoyed it immensely and there is my finished yummy peach cobbler thanks for watching guys as always this is lady curry wishing you comfort and joy from my heart
to yours.